Aaron Green there. Challenge with Daly. Jilali. Pritaro works out. Oh, good ball that was. Great ball, great turn, and Danny goes, and is that a foul? Corner is the outcome. Aaron Green, what a ball that turned out to be from Jilali. It's first corner for Sligo. And the big men have gone up from the back. Able to get it away. O'Connor challenged by Ando. Chance of a quick break, but uh, Ryan Brennan has had to check, and Sligo have got their men back. And Brennan taking off Pierce. Good play. Good break this by Grohari United. Grimes overlapping here. Oh, the chance of the goal! Paul O'Connor puts Grohari United in front. Right on 13 minutes, Sligo ripped apart with a swift counter-attack. Look at the overlap coming here. Timing of this pass is excellent. First time into the box, takes all the defenders out. Paul O'Connor keeps his head. Great ball by Cassidy here, the timing of the run. But look at the finish here, gets over the ball, keeps it down. Guitaro, Gilali. And Jalali spotted the run of Davran, that's a good ball, Davran early in! That was the most dangerous moment that Sligo will fashion. That was Jalali putting that ball in behind for Davran. That's where Sligo are not getting that man Jalali on the ball enough, he can create that sort of havoc. He's with Kretaro now, Ventry round the outside, Kretaro's cross away by Prendergast, out to Jalali once more. And Jalali... And it's 1-1, but it's disallowed. Michelle O'Neill at the flag up. Hold of the ball was over the line, well done, assistant. Great call, great call. You can see it here, she's absolutely inch perfect, but in game more frustration for Sligo over short. And then there to Gavin Brennan. Oh, what a goal, it won't count, it won't count, it's a foul by Brennan. It would have been a wonderful goal. It was a terrifically taken goal, but he uses his body again, George. Watch him here when the ball comes in. He just into the, you see the body there? Just the early contact, referee, spot on. After Taro coming off for Daniel North. So he's keeping the two strikers on. He probably put Dilyali out on the right wing, go 4-4-2. Now Grimes gives away the corner, and the pressure all coming from Sligo now. All hands on deck for draw to United, because this is a, a seriously concerted effort by Sligo. And Doe's corner, Elding missed the header. Oh, what a finish, it's Danny North! Well, there's a way to score your first FAI Cup goal. <laughs> Wonderful finish, and an inspired substitution. Daniel North pulled right away from the defenders, all his experience and then all his quality, slamming into the back of the net. Oh, skipping past the challenge is Alan Keane, and Keane goes down in a heap, and Prendergast brings him down. And a free kick to Sligo, and a yellow card for the Drogheda captain. Watch Prendergast coming in, deliberate free kick, referee absolutely correct. Final substitution then for Sligo Rovers, having had to replace Jeff Henderson early in the second half, and then sending on uh, Danny North, uh, which led to their equaliser. Will he score with his first touch like North did? I think he'll take this, Gaynor. I think it's a left for his ball. Although Joe Spindow wants something in Jalali, I think it's a left for his ball. Oh, it's in Doe. North! <laughs> I, I was wrong. <laughs> what about that? Danny North. Two goals, seven minutes, and Sligo go in front. Draw to protest. The, the protesting that the referee put the wall back and then didn't blow a whistle. The signal the free kick could be taken. That's what Draw are livid about. And they might just have a point. They might just have a point. He sent them off. He sent off Prendergast. Second yellow card in a space of just about a minute. It was his yellow card that led to the free kick. He did there's, blow his whistle. Yes. There's, there's, it, does the referee blow his whistle? Watch him now. No, he doesn't. He's going to blow it. 
If he's told him wait for the whistle and he hasn't blown it, he shouldn't allow the goal. Yes. Yes. And uh, if that's the case, it's a, it's very sad that this should be happening. But here, look at the equaliser. <laughs> it's Ryan Brennan, and it's 2-2. The youngest of the Brennan clan throws the lifeline to his teammates. Quality finish. At this stage of the game, so much pressure. Keep it down. Brilliantly taken. Gambling on the ball going through. What, what more can this game supply? More drama here. Gilali. North. Elding. 3-2. What a finish! You ask what more could it give? It's given us that! Look at this touch by Danny North. Wonderful touch, and this finish. Oh, magnificent goal. And this just caps it all, and if that goal wins the cup, there has never been a better one. Paul Duke blows the whistle, and the cup goes to Sligo yet again. Yes. Danny North's introduction turning the game in Sligo Rovers' favour, and now they've won the tournament for the third time in four years. This is the presentation of the FAI Cup to Sligo Rovers. It's what dreams are made of, you know, obviously. Gutted to be left out on the biggest game of the season, and I knew I'd get on at some point, and it's just. Balls fell right to me, and the second one, I told Joey just to flick it. We've done it before in the league and scored, so I told him to do it, and then it went in. And then I just see Elves out of the corner of my eye, and thought, I can't touch him, finish. So I just give him it, and thank God he put it away, you know. Players like this fella here, made for the big occasion. And uh, he's waited, he was, he was gutted, he was not, not in the side. But when the chance comes along, he's put it away. And, and, and well, not only that, he's had a hand in all three goals. And, that takes some doing, that takes some concentration, that takes some backing up of your players because there's a definite disappointment there. The players are out on the feet, they've worked so hard all season, I can't be any more proud of them. It was disappointing to suppose concede the goal in the, in the, in the last couple of minutes, but you know, to turn around and go up the pitch, and it just shows the character that's within the, within the dressing room. We probably didn't get a lot of them goals in the last couple of minutes of games this season where we've been pressing and just couldn't get the goals, but they all came today. I think the effort that the players gave, to come back from 2 1 down to get that Lake Rose are going to Dinger's on the felt we were heading for extra time. But there seems to be some dispute over the goal. They said the referee didn't blow his whistle, but it's something for another day anyway. But I'm so proud of my players, the effort they gave today. A fantastic final. And certainly uh, the players could give no more. So Sligo Rovers winning the FAI Ford Cup for the fifth time in their history. Joining us now for part one of tonight's programme are Alan, Stewie, Liam and Dave. Alan, we'll start with you. Uh, it didn't have extra time, it didn't have penalties, but it had everything else, hadn't it? Yeah, I don't think we needed extra time, to be no. honest with you, Peter, about everything that uh, was fitted into the 90 minutes, but it was a fantastic occasion. I think both sets of players deserve massive credit. Of course, Sligo are going to take all the credit and all the glory, and they're the ones that are enjoying the celebrations tonight. But you'd have to definitely say Drada played their part as well, and all credit to Mick Cook and his players. They put on a fantastic spectacle, a great show, great goals. I had a bit of everything, and it was a great yeah. day for the league, really, in general, you know? Yeah, obviously, Drada extremely disappointed, but uh, they did play extremely well in that first half, Stu and really took the game to Sligo Rovers, didn't yeah, they? It's probably the best I've seen them play all season. They were excellent, they really were, and they played their part in, in such a wonderful final. And listen to Mick at the end there, you know, he's, I'd have to commend him for how he's, how he's behaved himself and he's held his head up high and the, the club has gone through you know, a difficult period over the yeah. last, couple of, last couple of weeks, last month or so. And the players as well, indicative of him and his... And his uh, his behaviour, but they were excellent, and you know, on another day, they could have won it. Yeah, they certainly could. But I suppose there were turning points during the game, Liam, weren't there? Was there anything in particular that stood out for you where you felt, yeah, Sligo are now beginning to get a grip of things here? Well, I felt that uh, Paul O'Connor for me was the best player for Drogheda on that day, and he, he did a really good job in the middle of the field, containing Joseph and Doe as well, and and, and uh, starting attacks for Drogheda. And when he went off, I think it just swung the way because Joseph started to get on the ball more. Jalali was yeah. dropping on them spaces and. You know, for the last half an hour, and he just felt the Sligo were, were starting to uh, get a grip of the game. And I think if Paul O'Connor had stayed on, it might have been a different result. Yeah, it's, it, even, even though, Dave, it's an extraordinary record now the Sligo Rovers have at the Aviva, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's tremendous. But you have to say, I think Danny North, 
you know, his introduction really changed the game. You know, involving three of the goals. You know, I've, I've been harping on about this one up front all year, but like, you know, Elding and, and North are a deadly combination. Yeah. And you can see with the, with the goals that were scored yesterday, they were involved in everything. And, uh, you know, when, when there's two up there, it causes panic in, in the defence. And I think with Danny North, he was exceptional when he came on. Yeah, he certainly was. And needless to say, we'll be taking a look at uh, both of Danny North's goals. But first of all, Liam, let's take a look at the goal uh, that put Drogheda United in front. And Paul O'Connor, as you said, an outstanding game and an outstanding contribution here to well, start can, it off. You can see the, the, the energy he has here. He wants the ball outside the box here from a header here. And he manages to keep control of it. Brandon picks it up here and that uh, does well to stay on the ball. And you can see the many Drogheda players are looking to get forward. Uh, nice nutmeg here, and he plays it out to, to Cassidy. And Grimes is like a train coming up the outside <coughs> one, but he does really well. He just doesn't put it in the box. And there, who's at the back post, Paul O'Connor. And it's a really controlled finish, you know, because it's one of them you could put it over the bar very easily, yeah. but he's managed to control it. And, you know, it was a great, uh, it was a great goal from Drogheda's point of view. It certainly was, and they held that lead right up until half-time then. As the lads said, Danny North was introduced. And I suppose, Alan, we must remember, he came back from a, b a very bad knee injury and really was only regaining his place towards the end of the season. So to cap it with a performance as a second-half substitute like yeah, this well, it was, was great. It was the dream the scenario, really, Peter. You know, and as you said, once Danny came on, he changed the game, obviously getting the goals. But I think he did suffer a bad injury and he was coming back, but there was question marks over his fitness. But no one ever disputed how good of a player he was and a goal scorer. And, of course, this is just a piece of brilliance, but obviously it was the most contentious issue on the day. Really and truly, Peter, you would have to say it's only the players and the referee know did yeah. Paul Chu actually tell him you have to wait for the whistle. If that was the case, well then, fair enough, he should have disallowed it. But if he didn't, well then, I'm, I'm going to applaud the brilliance of Joseph Vendo and Danny North because that's a magnificent goal and I really think they caught Drogheda off guard there. And, as I say, to come on and score a goal, two goals, and to score one like that in a cup final, a great occasion. I'm, I'm going to applaud the brilliance of Joseph Vendo because he's been a fantastic player over the years and if you ever wanted a, a moment's magic to sum him up, there it is. Yeah, it certainly was a wonderful little bit of improvisation. And I think most people thought at that stage, Stewie, well, that's it. The cup is bound for Sligo. There's no way back for Drogheda now. But they did find a way back. Yeah, they did. And such is the character of Drogheda. This is Cassidy getting on the ball here. And in a game where substitutions play such a big role, Hines, big, strong, Ryan Brennan making a wonderful late run into the box. You see Hines there making his physical presence known. Uh, Brennan forcing into that area. The cover wasn't great for Sligo, but that's an excellent finish. I think he chose the keeper of the eyes there. And fantastic ca uh, character from Drogheda to come back from not just two goals you know the, the decision over the goal but losing uh, Prendergast to the sending off and um, you know like I say the character they showed was, was excellent on the yeah, day. It certainly was tremendous and at that stage Dave I know up in the studio in the Aviva we were getting set for extra time and indeed looking forward to it. We didn't get it though no. because of Elding teaming up with North again. Yeah and uh, I must say uh, Jalali Jalali on the wing was, I thought he was exceptional. I think, you know, when you're looking at, at people coming into this league, Jalali has something definitely, but a great chest down by Danny North. I think he went for the return. If, if that went wide of the post, I think Danny North would have been having a couple of wars with Elding. But uh, this is great. This is great. I think Michael Daly will be looking at it tonight and saying, if, if he got the header, he just missed it. But that's it. It's, it's all about inches. And he, he, he couldn't get the ball out of the box. But what a finish by Elding. You know, it started off the season tremendously well. You know, everybody was saying he's on fire. He's doing it. But very slack probably two or three months but to finish the season like that is, is great for him yeah certainly finishing it on a high uh, Drogheda you heard Mick mention the issue about the free kick but there was also a disallowed Drogheda goal which we're, we're going to have a look at it against you what did you think about this well when I first seen this I didn't think there was much wrong with it and I'm quite honest with you having seen it again I'd be very disappointed if that was given against me I think Alan Keane finds himself a little bit caught under the ball here he's clever in what he does he watches, gets a little nudge and he goes to the ground Makes up the mind for the referee to give the, to give the free kick. For Gavin Brennan, from his point of view, I'd be I'd be disgusted now that he hasn't given that because he's done everything right. You know, he, he, he's he's just he's just been strong. Yes, he does get his hands up, and I think maybe that's what the referee has seen. But Keane, clever, clever from his point of view. Yeah. So unfortunately, no joy for Draw United in what was their third cup final of the season. Just getting there was an achievement, but it's Sligo Rovers who walk away with the honours once again, and they take the trophy back to the showgrounds. Okay, that's it for part one. We're back shortly with the playoffs and the latest on the Irish job. So stay with.